Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Tom Mack Field at Father Elmer Stadium on the campus of Detroit Catholic Central High School in Novi for week six of the 2020 MHSAA football season and the Detroit Free Press Game of the Week. Today's game should be an exciting one, as this is a battle of two of the top teams in the Catholic League going at it for a Prep Bowl championship. It's a Detroit Catholic High School League Bishop Division Prep Bowl championship game between the Detroit Loyola Bulldogs and the Novi Detroit Catholic Central Shamrocks. I am Alex Schott, one of my partner here this afternoon, Aaron Jobson, and Aaron, both of these teams coming in with a 5-0 record coming into this game and have done really well over the course of the season. It's going, to be an, it's going to be an interesting matchup to watch how these two teams match up against each other. Yeah, Alex, Loyola, the winners of the AA, the top team in the AA division in Catholic Central, the top team in the Central Division of the Catholic League. They meet here today two very good teams you look on one side and it's an explosive offense at detroit loyola and on the other side of the spectrum it's a phenomenal defense at detroit you know by catholic central it should be a great game between these two teams here on a nice sunny fall afternoon early evening it's going to be a fun contest yeah absolutely Aaron. catholic central did win the coin toss they've elected to defer so the bulldogs of detroit loyola will get the ball first Kicking it out for the Shamrocks is going to be Charlie Menser, the senior kicker. Back to return for the Bulldogs is Marquise Henderson and Rashawn Wells. Both are senior leaders on this Bulldogs team. Catholic Central won the Central Division. Detroit Loyola won the AA Division. Janard Foster is also back for the Bulldogs. It'll be a fun matchup here this afternoon at Catholic Central. Menser getting ready, talking over with his team. The Bulldogs are ready. And this is a Detroit Loyola team that is excited to get back on the field after putting up 74 points in a 74 to six win over Romulus last week. An explosive performance from the offense of that group so they will start with the football first here today and it should be a very interesting first possession to see how that offense will work against the dominant defense of Detroit Catholic Central the Shamrocks allowing under 10 points per game this season now you know not a explosive offense for them but their defense has been so effective this year so a battle of two or one team great on offense and one team great on defense this one's going to go all the way back into the end zone for a touchback. What a nice kick by Menser. This is how this game is going to begin. Here come the Bulldog offense. They're led by their junior quarterback, Anthony Garrett, who's been an excellent piece as the play caller for this Bulldogs team this season. Yeah, and Garrett has really excelled under the coaching of Kevin Rogers in his first season at Detroit Loyola. Garrett, a dual threat quarterback who can sling the ball with a great arm strength but a very mobile quarterback as well and a transfer over from Detroit Renaissance last season so a big get for coach Rogers for to lead his program here this year first down and ten here's Garrett on the first play of the game is gonna throw it over to his junior wide receiver Shannon Foster Shannon Foster a key wide receiver to this Bulldog offense. Gets a good pickup. And it's going to be second down and manageable for the Bulldogs. Foster, a transfer from Southfield Arts and Technology, the top receiver for Garrett. He had, he's had 24 receptions for 395 yards and five touchdowns throughout the first three games of the year for Detroit Loyola. They're going to hand it off this time, but the Shamrock defense able to gobble him up. Are right back a few yards on that play. That was the sophomore running back Braylon McDonald on the play. Hurry up offense here on third down. They're going to fake the pass, fake the run at rather. It's going to be incomplete. Looking for Foster, batted away by the Shamrocks. The Shamrocks weren't fooled on that one and they force a three and out. Yeah, good stand by the Catholic Central defense there. As it was a nice pass to Shenard Foster to really get that drive going, but uh, two quick plays 
following that pass attempt, and it's going to be a three and out for the Loyola offense on their first drive of the game. So we'll see Catholic Central get out on the field after this punt. Here's the kick away by McConnell. The punt is blocked. Down on the field of the Shamrocks, and they are very excited about that because they get the ball near the red zone. That is a great turn of events for the Shamrocks as they sent a lot of pressure and blocked that punt. And they are going to start with the ball in great field positioning. As you mentioned, Alex, the offense going to have a great opportunity in the opening minutes of this contest within their own red zone. A great opportunity for the Shamrocks. That was Michael Ramirez, the senior captain in the defensive end, making the block on the play. And now here comes the Shamrock offense. Led by junior quarterback Declan Bile on first and ten. They're going to hand it off this time. Mohammed Jafer with the carry. Jafer, the lead back this season. That has been a key piece for them. He's come in for Danny Scott and has done a phenomenal job after his injury and. He's been very impressed with them. He's going to get a lot of touches today. 66 carries on the year for 314 yards. So Bile in the shotgun formation on second down and nine for the 11. Looks to throw. That one is going to be incomplete. Too high for his junior wide receiver, Owen Semp. And one thing that's been talked about this year with Catholic Central is they're throwing the football more. You know, this is a... a a program that has consistently been smash mouth, no gimmick, run the ball offense. And under a new offensive coordinator, you know, they're throwing the football a lot more times per game, averaging 22 throws per game. And that's because they have a very talented quarterback in junior Declan Bile, who was a late call up in his freshman season, took over midway through his sophomore year. Declan Bile on third down, looking to throw. Looking, he's looking into the end zone, and that one is going to be caught for a touchdown by Owen Seb. What a nice throw by Bile over to Seb, and the Shamrock strike first here in this one. Yeah, it was a great throw from Bile, who had great pass protection from his offensive line, and just plenty of time for him to drop back and wait and wait and wait for one of his receivers to get open. And it was Owen Seb, the 6'2 junior, who was able to get open near the middle of the end zone towards the back line and score the touchdown. Spencer's extra point is up and it is good. So just 110 seconds into this contest, the Shamrocks have a seven nothing lead over the Bulldogs in Detroit Loyola in the Detroit Catholic High School League Bishop Division Championship in the prop bowl here at Catholic Central this afternoon. Yeah, a hot start for the Shamrocks and it starts with uh, the punt block and the offense starting at the 13 yard line, able to get into the end zone quickly. Declan Bile with a great throw and a hot start for the Shamrocks. That was just a three play, 13 yard drive. The Shamrocks have been good on all areas of the field. Now the Bulldogs will have to respond after that block punt that they let up. This is going to be an interesting test for the Bulldogs here this afternoon. You know, this is definitely going to be the toughest team that they've seen all year. Catholic Central Division I program that is undefeated this season. You look at what they've done this year. And, you know, they've beaten Harper Woods, Brother Rice, De La Salle, Orchard Lake, St. Mary's. They've gone through the Central and they've handled their business. They've had a very good season. They're 5-0 and and Detroit Lola hasn't seen a team as talented as CC this year. So they know that they're going to have to play at the highest level they can and the highest level they have so far this year to win this game. And they're going to have to quickly change things after the start that they've had with a three and out, led to a punt block, and then quickly giving up a touchdown. So they have to quickly, on the fly, make these adjustments and get going here as Catholic Central poses a significant threat to their undefeated season. First and 10 at the 20 yard line. Garrett looking to throw. He's looking deep down the field. That one is going to be caught by the junior wide receiver, Jason Hardy. Hardy is another key piece on the wide receiver unit for the Bulldogs. 
And that was just poor coverage from the Catholic Central defense. It was Cameron Davenport, the junior defensive back, who got lost there on Hardy. And Hardy just wide open to reel that catch in. Hardy had two receiving touchdowns last week versus Romulus, a 52-yarder and a 22-yarder. Steps back to throw in a shotgun. Garrett under pressure, scrambling, looking to throw. That one is going to be incomplete. Nice coverage by Sam Dursa, the senior captain and defensive back. He was looking for Shenard Foster on that play. Yeah, that was good defense from Sam Dursa, the captain, one of the captains of this Catholic Central program. Dursa obviously a key piece as a wide receiver, but a defensive back as well. A big play there, break up that pass. So we have second down and 10 at the 48 yard line in Loyola territory. Fakes the pass, makes the run, and rather passes it again. He was looking for Hardy this time, but incomplete third down. Yeah, lucky that that wasn't intercepted by Dursa as the throw was behind Hardy and closer to Dursa than it was the intended receiver. So maybe just a bit of a rushed pass there by yeah. Garrett. Yeah, you see he was looking to give the hand give the hand the ball up. But now he was looking at the pass there that time. So this is gonna be an interesting third down situation. And we got a flag before the snap. And it looks like it's gonna be a false start penalty on the Bulldogs. Third and 15 at their own 43-yard line with 9 and 24 to go with a 7 nothing lead for the Catholic Central Shamrocks. Looking to throw, Garrett in the shotgun. Looking, pressure on, looking to throw, has a man open and it's caught by Hardy. He gets brought down on the play by Gavin Willard and Jackson Ewald of the Shamrocks but not before the Bulldogs move the chains. And they look to move very quickly down the field to have a hurry up offense. Yeah, a great throw there by Garrett to Hardy. And again, Hardy able to get open and find space for himself. And Garrett with just enough time facing pressure had to get rid of it, he did. And he found Hardy for the big first down on what was looking to be, what was gonna be the end of the drive. The 32 yard line looking to throw deep again, looking for Foster, bobbling for it. Did he make that catch? Did he? Yes, he did. That's an acrobatic catch by Shenard Foster. Bobbling it there and juggling it there for a second, but able to hold on to it for another first down. That was an incredible catch, Alex, as Foster, you know, kind of read the pass and was worried that it might get interception. Looked like he jumped up just to deflect it and bobble it. And as he was coming down, it kind of bobbled away where it was still a playable ball. And was able to grab onto it as he hit the ground. A huge completion on an incredible catch from Foster, the wide receivers of Loyola and pressing in this opening first quarter. And now a timeout is gonna be called down to the field. Called by Detroit Loyola, their first of the half with eight and 21 to go here in this first quarter. And Loyola making a statement that they wanna be in this, they wanna be, they wanna compete in this one. Yeah, a nice drive down the field in this one after a, a, a three and out on their first offensive drive of the game and then eventually the blocked punt and then the score um, from Declan Vile to Owen Semp on the throw. And the offense comes back out on the field for Loyola and they have quickly moved down the field with some nice throws from Garrett to Shenard Foster and Jason Hardy. It's gonna be first and goal at the 10 yard line, 8.21 to go. Bulldogs looking to get on the board after the Shamrocks Gone on 110 seconds into the game with a touchdown by Owen Semp from Bile. They're going to hand it off this time. Looking over to his right. Looks like that's going to be Kamari Wright, the sophomore running back. It's a gain of two on the play. Right, an underclassman for this Bulldogs team. Second down and goal at the eight yard line with under eight minutes to go here in the first. Play action pass, scrambling. The Shamrocks are gonna get over him that time. Garrett falls down. Looks like the ball was loose at the end of the play. But was he down first? Let's see what they say. It is gonna be Shamrock football. 
He was not down on the play. They said the ball was loose before his knee went down. And just like that, Catholic Central has the football back. Yeah, how about that? I thought it looked like he was down after the ball came loose, but nonetheless, it's going to be a Catholic Central fumble recovery and a mounting drive for the Bulldogs is ended after a fumble from Garrett. Not what you wanted after you were moving down the field quickly with some great throws. They will get it at their own 12 yard line for Catholic Central. They were able to get on the board very quickly after the blocked punt by Michael Ramirez to get a touchdown by Miles to step on their first drive. They're going to start off with a run. That's going to be Jafer, but the Bulldogs are able to swarm over him that time. Leading that way is the senior defensive lineman, Derek Harmon. Harmon is the anchor for this Bulldog defense, a commit to Michigan State at 6'5", 360 pounds. Yeah, he's one of the top 60 defensive linemen in the country, according to 247 Sports, top 30 in the state of Michigan. And he is a big body leading that, well, both sides of the line for Loyola. They're going to hand it off again, this time to Dursa. Dursa can run with the ball. You know he's their number one receiver. They like to use him as a running back as well. Able to get a, a minimal gain, but enough to make third down a little bit reasonable for them. It was second and nine coming in. Now they're looking at a third and four. Yeah, much easier to get four yards compared to nine. And we'll see. You know, we talked about Catholic Central being willing to throw the football, looking to throw the football more this season. This would be one of those plays where maybe in past years, they'd look to run the ball. This year, they're looking to throw. They're down and four at the 18 yard line. They're in the pass formation. We'll see what they do here at the line. Bile pulling an audible and the shotgun. Sets back to throw on third and four. Looking, that one is gonna be incomplete in and out of the hands of his tight end. Connor Cohan, the junior, at 6'1 and 220 pounds. And after the Shamrocks forced the fumble, unable to move the chains and they'll set out the punting unit. Yeah, pass located just too high of Cohen and unable to leap up and bring that one in. But if he would have put that a little bit lower, that would have been a first down as Cohen had the space and time to catch that football. Six and 18 to go here in this first quarter. Benster is going to send this one away. Foster and Marquise Henderson back deep to return near the 45 yard line. So this one is a long snap. This one's going to bounce all the way past the 35 and near the 30 yard line. And that's where the Bulldog offense will begin their next drive as they come back onto the field for their third possession of the game. Just like to mention today's Detroit Free Press Game of the Week presented by Detroit Public Schools Community District. Every school day counts for our children's academic, social, and emotional development. Detroit Public Schools Community District is preparing students for their rise and is safely providing face-to-face -face learning and online learning at home or in the learning center. Enroll today. Visit DetroitK12.org or call 313-240-4377. Remember, when students rise, we all rise. <laughs> Back to work are the Bulldogs at the 30-yard line with 6.08 to go here in the first quarter. It's a 7 nothing lead for the Catholic Central Shamrocks over the Loyola Bulldogs here. The Detroit Catholic High School League Bishop Division football championship game. Garrett looking to throw again over to his left to Marquise Henderson for his first touch of the game, his first reception rather. But a swarm of Shamrocks unable to stop him there, unable to get past the line of scrimmage. And it's going to be a loss of a couple yards on the play. Yeah, Henderson with a couple returns last week for touchdowns against Romulus. It was a 70 yard kickoff return and a 60 yard punt return. A very fast, agile, and athletic player for this Bulldog team. Both in the special teams, defense and offense, he just plays pr pretty much every snap for this team. Garrett in the shotgun with 5 and 22 to go. Looks to throw lots of pressure on him. And that's going to be picked off by Mohamed Jaffer. He is racing down the field and he gets knocked down at the 14 yard line. That is the second turnover by the Bulldogs here in the last two possessions. And the Shamrocks will get good field position once again. Yeah, and Garrett was facing pressure 
to his right from Jackson Ewall, who was the who picked up the fumble recovery on the last possession. So he just trying to get rid of that football before taking a big hit. But right there was Jafer, who was able to intercept the pass. And once again, Catholic Central forces a turnover, and well, they're back in the red zone. Yeah, there's an injured player for the Bulldogs down on the field. That's Lonzi Tramble the third, junior linebacker and tight end for the Bulldogs team. He's in some pain right now looking over the athletic trainer and the staff looking at him over. The last two possessions have resulted in turnovers for the Bulldogs. It started with a blocked punt, then a fumble, and then an interception right there. That's not how the Bulldogs wanted to start this game. Yeah, you never want to lose a player, and we're certainly wishing that him the best and that he's able to quickly get off this field here and then quickly return. You never want to see anyone succumb to injury, so hopefully we'll be able to see him back on the field shortly. A tremendous player, Lonzi Tramble, the third. He's getting help walking off the field. We'll see Catholic Central get back to work out on offense. They're coming off a win 21-3 to the Cubs University of Detroit Jesuit last week. And they had some key plays in that game to help them get in position to where they are right now. And Declan Bile, as he steps back out on the field of the offense, 10 of, 11, 10 of 20 last week against U of D Jesuit, threw a touchdown and an interception, also 111 yards. So, so Bile and company are back to work for the Shamrocks at the 15 yard line in the red zone. Bile. Faking the snap, calling the count, now looking over at his coach, Dan Anderson, on the sideline. Now he's calling for it. He's going to hand it off to Muhammad Jaffer, and he stopped in the backfield for a loss. A nice tackle by the senior linebacker, Jeff Hayes. Jeff Hayes with the tackle. Yeah, and there's nowhere for Jaffer to go on that outside. And I think what you're going to see from CC is they're going to run to the opposite side of where number 55 for the Bulldogs, Derek Harmon, is lined up on. They don't want to run towards him because he's such a big body. He has a matchup advantage every time he steps out on that field. They don't want to run into him because he will bring you down. 4.38 to go. Catholic Central up 7 nothing. And a timeout will be called by the Bulldogs. Their second of the half already. Late here in the first quarter, Catholic Central with the lead, looking to add on to this lead. And the Shamrocks have done really well so far against the Bulldogs team who's coming in with a lot of energy, a lot of intensity. Catholic Central, the home team and the host team for the Prep Bowl this season. Last year was at Eastern Michigan. In the past, it's always been at Ford Field. But due to the unfortunate circumstances this season. And you have to give credit to this Catholic Central team who didn't make it to the playoffs last year. It's been a great turnaround for their program. Atop the division in the Central of the Catholic League, 5-0, and obviously here in the Prep Bowl Championship. They look to be an incredible program this year. Looks to make a deep run into the Division I state playoffs this season as Bile steps back to throw on second down. Looking over to his left. That one is going to be caught and looking to go into the end zone. He dropped it in the near the end zone. That's his tight end, Connor Cohan. That's where Bile's pass completes to number 82, Connor Cohen. And they're going to, the ball will be placed at the spot of the fumble. And yeah, it looks like they the mark yeah, they mark him down at the one yard line. It's, I don't I think Cohen maybe stepped out of bounds before he got into the end zone and just by the time his you know forward progress you know, he just kind of where he dropped the ball it had been in the end zone. First and goal. Mile with the handoff plowing his way in is a touchdown for Connor Bell. Connor Bell with a one and a half yard 
Carter Bell, the junior running back, able to file his way into the end zone with a goal line stand, and Catholic Central adds on to their lead. They've been effective in the red zone. They're two for two there, and they've done a great job creating turnovers and converting off of those turnovers as Bell on the one yarder goes in unscathed. And Catholic Central off to a real nice start in this contest. Spencer's extra point is up and good. 14 nothing now in favor of the Shamrocks over the Bulldogs with four and 28 remaining here in this first quarter of play. And Catholic Central is taking advantage of the Bulldogs' mistakes. And that's something the Bulldogs will have to adjust as they come out onto the field with the next drive in just a, in just a few moments. And that's the biggest difference is this game is, you know, Catholic Central looks just incredibly comfortable. And I don't know if it's maybe they're playing at their home field or, you know, I think that certainly plays a factor in a game like this. But Detroit Leola, they didn't get out on the field until, you know, the, the pregame clock was around 20, 25 minutes or so. They weren't on the field for nearly as long as Detroit, you know, Catholic Central, no by Detroit Catholic Central. So they didn't have that same amount of time to warm up and stretch out and just kind of get a feel of the turf and all of that. So it, it just looks like it's a lot more comfortable for Catholic Central to be out on that field right now. And they have really played a sound football game in this opening quarter. They have absolutely, and they're going to continue to do that. But the Bulldogs look to respond here. They showed that they wanted to. Looking to get one in the end zone this time as Mentor picks us one in the end zone. And they're going to say he was in the end zone first. Foster wanted to return that one. But his foot was in the end zone for a touchback. So first and 10 at their own 20. Comes Anthony Garrett and company. And an, an important drive for Garrett and the Bulldogs as they're, you know, going down 14 to nothing, three turnovers. They need to clean up their performance in this one. And a sound drive here where they put points up on the board would be a convincing way to show that they're doing just that. Garrett looking on a pump fake. He's able to get it to Jason Hardy on his left. Another catch for Herb. Anthony Garrett's pass complete to Jason Hardy. The and there's a flag down at the end of the play. We'll see who it's on. Yeah, they're going to call holding on the Bulldogs. Well, that's unfortunate for Detroit Loyola. You get a nice six yard game there. And instead, you know, it's brought back 10 yards. First and 20 at their own 10 now with 421 remaining. They're back deep now. They got to be careful. So that catch was waved off by Hardy. They're going to run it this time. This time it's Braylon McDonald, the sophomore. He had a carry earlier in the quarter. He gets stopped there with a nice tackle by the defensive end, Sean Field. And the sophomore linebacker, Beckler Hauser, as well as the junior defensive end, Andrew Ross for the Shamrock defense. So now it's second down and long at the 11. Garrett sets up to throw on the shotgun, looking over the middle. That one is gonna be caught by Foster. Gets past a couple of CC defenders, still on his feet, looking to get to the first down marker. And he gets there just there, barely. And he's able to move the chains for Loyola. Yeah, just kind of wheeling and dealing through a couple of tackles and eventually brought down right at the first down marker. So the chains are going to move with a nice play there by Foster. You know, it's, it, it's sometimes a misconception that it's easy to bring down the guys that are just smaller. But Foster is so quick, so agile, so athletic. It's going to be hard to wrap your arms up around him and bring him down because he's spinning, he's juking, he's moving. It's not always easy. It's not as easy as it seems. So Jappé Brockman on the carry that time. He's a sophomore running back for this Bulldogs team. Had a loss of two on that play for second and 12. And Brockman, Kamari Wright, some different guys getting carries in this game for Loyola. 
Garrett looking to throw again to Foster in and out of his hands, incomplete. That was nice coverage there by Beckler Hauser. He makes a key play there. Two and 37 to go, 14 nothing Catholic Central over Loyola. They're in the Detroit Catholic High School League Bishop Division Prep Bowl Championship. Third down and 12 at the 28 yard line for the Bulldogs. Garrett in the shotgun formation. The two wide receivers to his right, looking to throw deep down the field. Incomplete, he was looking for Marquise Henderson. In the area on defense was Sam Dursa as well as Gavin Willard. As well as Mohamed Jaffer and the Bulldogs will have to send out the punting unit. Yeah, that throw by Garrett just not really near any of his receivers. And it's been a shaky game for him so far. And they need a better performance out of him. He's found some of his talented receivers, but too many of his throws have just been wild and not close enough to his receivers for them to be able to make a play at it, play at the ball. McFarland, it's a block again. Catholic Central looking to get at it. And they do it again to Miles McFarland, the punter of Loyola. And it's gonna be spotted at the 15 yard line once again. Shamrocks. Able to do it again, this time Michael Ramirez, his second block punt of the game. And that's the fourth turnover the, uh, of the game for the, the Bulldogs, Catholic Central, forcing mistake after mistake, and now they're looking again, where are they gonna start with the football in their own red zone? I mean, it, it can't be much easier for you as the offense able to quickly get back out on the field, uh, you know, for what, if they score the football, what should be a pretty quick drive. So the second time in their first three possessions, they've started in the red zone. This time with two and 26 to go in the first. A timeout on the field called by Catholic Central. That's their first timeout of the half. With two and 26 remaining. Well, they, they certainly want to capitalize on this hot start and the turnovers that they've forced. They don't want to you know, not score here and let the Bulldogs get back out of the field and kind of find a way to settle into the game after a defensive stop, swing some momentum their way. They want to come out, they're going to take this time out, make sure that what they want to do offensively can happen so that they're able to take a three score lead. You know, they don't want to let up the gas at all, any ounce. They want to put this away as early as possible and take, don't take their foot off the throat. Yeah, absolutely. Catholic Central looking to stay focused here in this one. They know how good Detroit Loyola really is over the course of the season. Just like to mention other games that happened around here this afternoon. In the Cardinal Division Championship, it was Clarkson Evers Collegiate winning 35 0 over Riverview Gabriel Richard. Another key game out on the west side of the state here today Detroit Martin, Luther, Detroit Martin Luther King traveling to Muskegon Mona Shores in a Division II state championship rematch. Bile. Two wide receivers to his right, two on the left. Steps back to throw on first down. Looking over the middle, that one is dropped by Dursa. He can't believe that one, that went out of his hands. Yeah, I'm not sure how Dursa didn't hold on to that football. Maybe just started thinking about what he needed to do next. And you know, that's a common thing that happens. You start thinking ahead of yourself before you have possession of that football, before you're holding on to it, clutching it up to your chest. That's the kind of stuff that happens. You get too far ahead and you drop that football and then you're kicking yourself. That's a huge break there for the Bulldogs. Second down and 10. File looking again. This one too far for Seb. A couple of defenders in the air. That's McDonald and Hardy. So now it brings up third down and 10 at the 14 yard line. And if they don't convert here, I would anticipate seeing Charlie Mensner, the kicker, come on out for the field goal attempt. But certainly the Shamrocks would like to convert this third down and keep the offense out on the field. Balls at the 14 yard line. Yes, Spencer Lyons, the sophomore next to him, but he looks to throw in the air. Let's see what he does. Lyons moving over to his left. 
in a receiver spot. Steps back to throw. Scrambling and gets it away, and it's going to be caught by Owen Sepp somehow. Bile threw the football before he got down, and Sepp was able to catch it. Yeah, he, and, and he was falling down, let go, you know, threw the football. The pass was deflected, and just running his route, Sepp ran into the football and is able to corral it, and he's able to get to the first down marker. And it's going to be first and goal at the three yard line. That's where they'll spot it. Sometimes it's skill and sometimes it's luck. That time I'm going to say yeah, it's a little bit of both. Yeah, Bile had that capability and all kinds of tricks under his sleeve. Able to make that play work. Here's a hand off to Bell. Bell looking to plow his way into the end zone for his second touchdown of the game. And Bell has been the de facto back in goal line situations and that's the catholic central that everyone knows that smash mouth run it up the gut and bell does it there once again for another catholic central touchdown and the shamrocks look like a well-oiled machine here in this first quarter menster's extra point is away and good 21 nothing now in favor of the shamrocks with 1 and 49 to go they've been firing on all cylinders aaron they really have, Alex. You have to look at the performance that the defense has had because, you know, a lot of times you talk about defense leading to offense, and sometimes that's more so talked about in basketball. But you look at this game right here: a punt, a, a, a block, blocked punt, a fumble recovery, another blocked punt. They're creating opportunities for their offense. That twice, the Catholic Central has offense has started the ball from either the 15-yard line or the 13-yard line inside the red zone, just giving them great opportunities. Uh, to score the football. The defense has certainly led to the offense for Catholic Central in this game, and they are in complete control of this one. Yeah, they've been really taking control of this one and looking to keep the pedal to the metal here, only in the first quarter. Menser going to kick this one away. Two players, three players rather, are back in the end zone. And they're going to let this one be a touchback once again. And the ball will be spotted at the 20 yard line. And it's imperative for Loyola to show some signs of life here. They can't get demoralized after a slow start and, you know, not the start that they wanted. They have to come out on the field here and recognize that it's the first quarter. There is still a ton of football left to be played in this one, and they are nowhere near out of this game. The offense has got to come out and show some signs of life. And they, they did well on the drive when they got it into CC territory before Garrett fumbled the football. That was their best drive this quarter. He's in the shotgun once again. Garrett sets back to throw, looking, looking. Took it over to his left, was looking for Foster. Incomplete, but a flag is thrown. It looks like there was some coverage there on Dursa denying Foster to able to catch the ball. Let's see what the call is. Is it going to be a pass interference? That also could have been on Muhammad Jafer on that same side. You see, he kind of threw his arms off after the flag came out. Like, oh, I didn't do it. And then once the flag came out, oh, come on, you're kidding me. They're going to call prior to the pass, holding defense on the Shamrocks. So a nice chunk of yards gained off that penalty for the Bulldogs. And, you know, when you don't complete the pass, you'll take uh, the yards any way you can get them. Right there, they'll get them off the penalty flag. So it's going to be first and 10 at the 30 for a 10-yard penalty. Clock at 144. Shot gun formation again by Garrett. He likes to do that a lot. Lots of time in the pocket. And this one is going to be intercepted once again, this time by Jackson Ewald. And he gets brought down near the 20 yard line and the Shamrocks are having a field day defensively creating turnovers after turnovers. Yeah, and how about this start for the Shamrock defense and Jackson Ewald, he had a, the fumble recovery on the late fumble from Garrett on the drive where the Bulldogs are moving down the field incredibly well and we're within the red zone and now an interception right there. And well, this time, you know, unfortunately, sorry, Catholic Central offense, you don't get to start inside the red zone, inside the 20 yard line. You're gonna have to start at the 21 yard line. So real tough field positioning for the Shamrocks to start this drive. Yeah, right near it though, still great field position. 
Hell, I was being sarcastic. Uh, I'm being sarcastic. Yeah. Of course, it's great field positioning for the Shamrocks. Lions, he's going to hand it off. But stopped by McFarland, Miles McFarland, and Derek Harmon of the Bulldogs. Loss of three on the play. The loss of three on the play. Second and 13 at the 24 yard line. Approaching 75 seconds to go here in this first quarter of play. Catholic Central has been a well oiled machine here in this first quarter. Three wide receivers to the left, one to the right, and one running back in this formation. Files. Looking. Pressure getting on him. Get to the way. And that one is going to be caught in the end zone. And they're going to say incomplete. Was not in bounds that time, Sam Dursa. Yeah, that's the right call there. Dursa was in the air when he snagged that. And when he came down, his feet were out of bounds. A close play, no doubt about it. But the right call by the sideline judge there. And yeah, that's unfortunate. But it's third down. At the fifth, the 50 seconds to go at the 23 yard line. Cam Davenport coming in for this play. It's another key receiver in the Shamrock offense. Vile looking over, gets it off. Pressure coming, and the ball is loose. It's down on the ground, still loose. And they're gonna say incomplete. He was in the forward motion. That was very close. <laughs> be the fumble, but they're going to say Bile was in the throwing motion, the passing motion, moving forward, so it's incomplete. I think Bile was seeing his future ghost when he saw Derek Harmon chasing him and putting pressure on him, so he just tried to get rid of that football as fast as he could. Now Charlie Menster is going to kick this 40-yard field goal attempt. Menser's one of the ex, one of the best kickers in the state. And Catholic Central calls a timeout. They're second of the half. So both teams have used two timeouts here in the first quarter. 44 seconds to go. And I think Catholic Central saw all the pressure that was going to come on this field goal block attempt, and it may have only hit some guys out on the field there. So they take that timeout and going to regroup. But a, a, a you know a 40 yard field goal, it's, it's not easy for most NFL kickers nowadays. So it's going to be a, a tough task for the senior kicker Charlie Mentzner. And 40 yard field goal again, like I said, Mentzner able to send this down the field. Let's see what he does here. The Bulldogs are getting ready. They want to put a lot of pressure on. They're all set and ready to go. Here we go. Kick is away. And this one is no good. He missed it to the left. You saw the pressure coming from the Bulldog defense. They were ready. They wanted to block it, but they'll take that they'll take the goes wide left. Yeah, they'll take whatever they can get at this point. And, you know, they have to really kind of turn things around here so to get that where they were able to hold cc from scoring off the long field goal attempt for mensner you know they'll take whatever they can get at this point and now it's on the offense to come back out on the field and stop turning the football over ball for the 20 yard line 39 seconds to go here's a handoff this time to malik marable the senior running back able to get a few yards on that play first time he's carried the football here in this game sean field made the tackle the defensive end one of the captains for coach anderson's team clock at 15 seconds we'll see if they just let this run out yeah, if they if they're running a play it's just one more second and nine at the 21 yard line they're waiting with two seconds left and they're going to let the first quarter come to an end. So it's a 21 to nothing lead for the Shamrocks of Novi Detroit Catholic Central over the Bulldogs of Detroit Loyola here at our Detroit Free Press game in a week. 
and the Detroit Catholic High School League Bishop Division Prep Bowl Championship game. A hot start for the Shamrocks, and they're doing a great job forcing turnovers and manufacturing points off those turnovers. I mean, you couldn't ask for really a better start from them. The only thing that they came up short on was the missed 40-yard field goal. But other than that, it's really been a picture-perfect start for the Shamrocks. Yeah, absolutely, Aaron. Just want to mention this broadcast is brought to you by the Detroit Free Press, your flagship news and information source for sports in Michigan. The Free Press has launched a new digital subscription model, which gives high school sports fans the exclusive access to Mick McCain's weekly columns, rankings, and predictions. Your support will help the Free Press stream high school football games all season long. Subscribe today at Freep.com for our latest promotional offer. Back to work come the Bulldogs as they switch sides to begin the second quarter. Second and nine at the 21-yard line. For Anthony Garrett and company, he sets back to throw in a shotgun formation, looking over to his left, looking for Hardy in and out of his hands, incomplete. It's going to be third down. Jafer was in the neighborhood of that play. Third and nine at the 21 yard line. That's back to throw again on third and nine. This one is going to be caught. That one was caught on the play by Caron Davis, the junior wide receiver. What a good job by Davenport right there on the catch to bring him down. And they're still looking at a fourth down situation. Looks like the offense is still on the field. It's fourth and six at the 24-yard line. They're going to go for it here. Garrett looking to throw deep down the field, looking for Hardy, and in and out of his hands. He was at midfield in the coverage that time Jackson Ewald. He thought he had him, but couldn't hold on to it. Yeah, that was a play where it was just Hardy. You know, he was... He was in a position where he could have caught that football. And it wasn't a situation where he was fighting for control and fighting for positioning to catch it. That was in his hands and he just lost it. That's a very unfortunate play if you are the Loyola Bulldogs and now Catholic Central, as has been the status quo in this game, their offense is gonna start in phenomenal field position. This time at the 24 yard line in Loyola territory, Now Bio gets back to work. Japer able to get there, almost lost it. Still moving at the 20 yard line, getting to the 15. For a down near the 10 yard line is Jason Hardy with the tackle. And that's really the first time today that we've seen a toss kind of run play from the Shamrocks, but it works out well. And well they get a first down, a change move. Inside the red zone now are the Shamrocks. First down and 10 at the 12-yard line after that nice pickup by Jafer. High formation here, 21 nothing in favor of the Shamrocks. Jafer, again, looking to go up the middle this time. Gets passed through a couple defenders, but finally gets brought down by Marquise Henderson. Nice. Henderson, it came up with a tackle there after Jafer was able to spin past a couple tackles and get a couple positive yards there. Looks like Jafer sat on the field. They're going to talk it over. They're going to have an injury timeout here on the field. Both sides are going to talk it over. At this break, I just want to talk about the other key game that is happening around in the state. It's Muskegon Mona Shores up 28 0 over Detroit Martin Luther King late in the second quarter. That's a big game over there. 28 0 lead for the Sailors. That's an impressive, impressive performance from them. And we've seen Detroit King a couple times this year, and that's a very good team, a very good program that it kind of taken into all of their competition outside of Cast Tech. But Mona Shores. Oh, that's an impressive performance from them. Yeah, Mono Shores was the defending Division II state champions last year to defeat Detroit King and that King 35 26. Yeah, 10 and 23 to go here in the second quarter in this game. 21 0 in favor of the Shamrocks on their home field. 
This time to Spencer Lyons. He's going to the left before Miles McFarland makes the stop. And he's going to get a couple on that play. You know, one, two yards. But we'll see what the Shamrocks do here on third down. They've been running the football. Do they try to mix in a throw here or take their shot with file? It's third and seven at the nine yard line in Loyola territory. You can certainly bring out the field goal unit if you don't convert here. And, you know. Three wide receivers to the right, one to the left. Both the tight end as well. That's Cohan. Looks to throw, scrambling. Look over in the middle. That one bobbled in the air. That one is going to be incomplete, nearly intercepted by Marable. Billy Morphew, the junior wide receiver, was the intended target. Yeah, and he's unable to bring it in. Good defense in the secondary from the Bulldogs. And that's going to send out the field goal unit. This time it's going to be from 26 yards. Menser on the last drive missed it from 40. This one a little bit easier for him. This one should be good. Let's see. He gets it up and he gets it good this time. 24 0 in favor of the Shamrocks over the Bulldogs with 9 and 18 to go here in the first half. So the Shamrocks have held. Or excuse me, the Bulldogs have helped the Shamrocks from getting into the end zone on the last two possessions and forced a couple of field goal attempts. Obviously, the 40 yarder missed by Mensner on the previous offensive possession for the Shamrocks, but CC still able to get another three there. And, you know, when you look at the field positioning that the Shamrocks have started with, that's probably the, the best you can hope for right now from the Bulldog defense. It's going gonna, it's gonna to take the offense, you know, getting out of their own territory uh, for CC to not have incredible field position and put them in a great position to put up points, whether it be a touchdown or a field goal. Yeah, the Bulldogs feel happy about that. Even though they left three, they can still get one here and get something going. It's a lot of time left in this game. The Bulldogs have proved themselves time and time again. A very talented team. Menser, get ready to kick this off. Three back in the end zone for the Bulldogs. This one is going to be up in the air, and they're going to say he's in the end zone. Shenard Foster. Metzer has not allowed the Bulldogs to have any chance to return. So now, the Bulldogs get it ready. We'll see what the offense comes out and does here on another offensive possession for the Bulldogs. They just have not been able to get down the field outside of one possession where they eventually fumbled the football. And head out to Marable and he gets stopped in the backfield for a loss. Excellent tackle by a couple of defenders. That's Michael Bedu, the junior defensive tackle, as well as Bruno Kuberdich, a senior defensive lineman able to make the stop. Yeah, Gubernich just came in from the outside and no one there to stop him. Loss of five on the play. Second and 15 for the Bulldogs. Eight and 48 to go in the half. Down 24 nothing to Catholic Central. Garrett looking to throw it down the field and this one is going to be incomplete. Was looking for Foster on the play. Looks like that was Davenport was looking like he was going to make a knee interception that time. Garrett. Looking to capitalize here on third down. Gets it off. Pressure, and that one is batted down. They're going to say incomplete. That was batted down by Gubernich. Also there was Braden Corser, the sophomore linebacker. 
Now the Bulldogs are going to have to set out the punting unit. they got to be very careful. McFarland was, has, has had his box punt both times so far by Michael Ramirez. You're going to see the Shamrocks run up very quickly to block it for the third time. Let's see if it happens. McFarland, he wants to just get it away as quickly as possible. Able to get it off this time. Line drive kick. It's going to be caught by Evan Hager. He's at the 30 yard line. He gets brought down. A flag down. Brought down on the play by the sophomore linebacker, Joshua Watts. Yeah, the flag thrown right about when he was tackled. So we'll see what the call is. They're moving the ball back. So. They're going to call holding on the Shamrocks on the return. On the so, you know, unfortunately for Catholic Central, this is going to, they're going to start with the ball on the 41 yard line of the Loyola Bulldogs. And that's the worst field positioning that they've had to start with the ball with today. I mean, how terrible for them. Well, they did start with it off the fumble. They did start with it off the fumble by Garrett in the first quarter. They had it inside the 13 yard line in their own territory. That's true. I stand corrected. But Bile gets it at first and 10. Look at the Lions. Lions looking to his right. Gets past one and gets a hard hit by Malik Marable. No gain on the play is called. Second and 10 at the 41 yard line. The Lions on the field in place of Jafer, who was shaken up earlier in this quarter. Eight minutes to go here in this first half. 24 nothing in favor of the Shamrocks. Second and 10 at the 41. We're going to move down the field. Dursa moving over to Biles left. Lots of time, looking to throw. Now doesn't, has to move. He's going to keep it with the football. And he gets brought down by the linebacker, Jeff Hayes, the senior. He just had to hold on to himself. He didn't want to avoid a turnover. I thought he was maybe going to look for Owen Semp, who looked like he was kind of going to turn around and head towards the sideline of where Bile was running with it. But Bile decided to tuck it and keep it himself. And the Shamrocks are looking at third and ten. Yeah, at, their own, at the 41-yard line of Loyola, rather. Seven minutes to go here in this second quarter of play. Here at the Prep Bowl Championship at Catholic Central. Bile on third down, looking to his right. Throws, that's caught by Owen Sepp. Stays inbounds, looking to move even more. And he finally brought down to the back by Hayes. And that was one of those passes where Bile got rid of it right after he caught it at the snap. And it was caught by Semp as he was just kind of turning around and looking for the ball. He just had his hands out and it just kind of fell into him, but he's able to hold on to it and gain some yards after the catch. Officials timeout. Looks like we have an injury on the field. That's Malik Marable on the play. Going to walk off the field. Malik Marable, the player receiving attention. Just like to mention today's Detroit Free Press game of the week is presented by Detroit Public Schools Community District. Every school day counts for our children's academic, social, and emotional development. Detroit Public Schools Community District is preparing students for the rise. They're still providing face-to-face -face learning and online learning at home or in a learning center. Enroll today. Visit DetroitK12.org or call 313-240-4377. Remember, when students rise, we all rise. Six to twenty-six to go in the first half, ball spotted at the 15-yard line for a Shamrock first down. High formation here this time, Lions has it, but gets stopped for a loss. Nice tackle by a couple of Bulldog defenders, the junior defensive end, Ramon Murray, and the junior linebacker, Rakeem Boyer. Yeah, Murray, just no one there to contest him, and able to hit for a big loss on Lions. So 
off the five on the play makes it second and 15 at the 20. It's under six minutes to go in the half. He looks over, gets the snap. Pressure coming, able to complete it for a gain that time. That's going to be Semp once again. Yes. Semp is having himself a nice day, and again, right there, he's been a, the target for Bile, who's had to roll out plenty of times today after facing pressure. And a good catch there, but still, you know, third and six for the Shamrocks. Third down and six of the 11. 5.08 to go in the half. Bile in the shotgun, three wide receivers to the left, one to the right. Four up for the Bulldogs defensively, pressure coming. Then they keep it himself, able to stay up after one tackle. Goes again. He's able to keep up the group. It was just moving to the first down marker, it looks like he did. I think he did, Alex. I think he got just to the line, or the first down line. And they're gonna say he got a first down. First to goal to five. That was just a hard hit by Bile from McFarland. And he stayed on his feet and he kept going. That's impressive. It's impressive stuff. First and goal. Play action pass. Looking to throw into the end zone. And that one is going to be caught for a touchdown by the tight end, Michael Ramirez. Michael Ramirez, a captain, tight end, and defensive end. Had a big impact on this game already and makes another impact play there on a nice play action pass. Everyone in that three running back set was expecting, oh, they're running it up the middle. That's Catholic Central for you, but nope. This new offense, a play action pass. Bile rolls out and finds his tight end, Michael Ramirez, in the end zone for the score. 31 nothing now in favor of the Shamrocks over the Bulldogs. Four and 16 to go here in this first half of play. Catholic Central continuing to move along the field and able to keep it rolling here. Turn our Detroit Free Press game of the week here at the Detroit Catholic High School League Bishop Division Prep Bowl Championship game. Look at some of the other games that happened around, happened around here last night in Metro Detroit. Brother Rice picked up a 23 to 13 victory over Detroit Country Day. Cass Tech won 35 nothing over De La Salle. Other scores from around the area. Belleville able to hold off Livonia Churchill 35 to 14. West Bloomfield with a 28 nothing win over Lake Orion. And DeWitt on the other side of the state picked up a 43 to six victory over Stevensville Lakeshore. They kick this off again. He has sent this one deep once again. This time it will be returned by Foster at the one yard line. Able to move down the field. He's at the 20, going to his right. Going to be stopped out of bounds near the 28 yard line. And the Bulldogs will come back out on offense. And Foster has been hoping to be able to return the football, but the last two, three times it, he's been back to return it off the kick return. It's been called in the end zone for a touch, well, for a touchback. So he's able to get it there and you know, get, improves the field positioning a little bit for the Bulldogs. Throw nine remaining. Garrett out, back to work on offense at the 27 yard line. Garrett steps back to throw, looking over to his left. That's Hardy. Two defenders are there very quickly. Dursa as well as Jafer, who's back in the contest. It's good to see Jafar back out there. You certainly worry when your lead running back goes down, and that's after Danny Scott went down for this team. The captain, running back, and defensive back. So, you know, you didn't want to lose your, technically, your number two running back there. You know, so good to see he, he's at least healthy enough to get back out on the field and play defense. Maybe they're just resting him offensively for the time being. Yeah, play Carl dead, flag down. 
offsides like against the Shamrocks. Yeah, offsides on the defense will move the ball five yards. First down. And it first should down, be a first down on. at the 37 yard line. Catholic Central hasn't made a lot of mistakes, if any, in this contest. They played really well over the course of the afternoon. So now they're going to hand it off this time. Looks like he's getting brought down on the field. That is going to be McDonald. Blake Marable, the ball carrier, McDonald was on the run. Yeah, we haven't seen McDonald a lot today, but he's had a rushing touchdown against Romulus, and Cranbrook, and Lakeshore. So he is a sophomore back for them. Pass is complete over to his right side. Ball is loose on the fumble. That was Davis. And Catholic Central forces another turnover. The Shamrock defense is a turnover creating machine. How, how about that? He just took it out of the hands of the Bulldogs and takes it away. It's another turnover in the Catholic Central offense. And he's going to head back out onto the field here with 2.41 left to play in the half. He was it looks like he made moving with the football because I think it, it, it is a fumble if he moved it in a football move. We'll see what they record that as. I think it's a fumble. Bile hands it off to his running back, Evan Hager. Hager with some space at the 20, and he finally gets brought down by Marquise Henderson. Nice to see Hager, the sophomore running back, gets a carry that time. And mixing in some different guys and getting touches here. Hager with a great run and on the first down moves the chains quickly for the Shamrocks. Clock's at 2.13. Ball spotted at the 17 yard line for a first down. Hager back in. Once again, as the running back, the Biles going to throw it this time. Over the middle. That one is going to be incomplete. He was looking for Connor Cohan, the tight end. Yeah, it went down the middle and a slant route was Cohen and just wasn't able to put it in his chest was by also. Going to be second down for the Shamrocks here. So plenty of time, two and one left to play in the half. Catholic Central. Looking to add another one here before halftime. As they have three wide receivers to the left now. One to the right, that's Semp. And it looks like the Bulldogs jump, but we'll see. Yeah, it's going to be offsides. They're going to call it the freshman defensive lineman, Jeremy Christian. Second and five at the 12. Two oh one to go. Bile off to Hager has open space on his left, able to move down to the five before a swarm of Bulldogs able to make the stop, but not before a first down. So first down and a goal for CC. This is where five yard line. This is where they. Ran that nice play action on their last score. Well, they went into the end zone for Michael Ramirez. So, and we'll see. They run it up the gut. They try a play action. Under 90 seconds to go in the half. File. It's going to give it to Hager. Hager's done well this drive, but can't get anywhere going here. What a nice tackle. That was a hard one by Marquez Henderson, the linebacker senior. Approaching the final minute here of this first half. Clock continues to run. Second to goal at the three. Bile. 
Rager again looking to the end zone, but it looks like he's going to be short by a yard or two. McFarland with the stop. It looks like it's going to be third and one for the Shamrocks. 40 seconds left in the half. Third down and goal. Looking to hand it off. That one's going to be into the end zone for a touchdown by Danny Scott. He's coming in with limited action. He was injured earlier in the season. But wait, there's a flag down. If it stands, it's going to be called on Danny Scott, the touchdown. What the call is here. Picking up the flag. It's a touchdown for Danny Scott. Yeah, and I think everyone was thinking Danny Scott was out for this game. He's been injured, and this is you know the first time we had seen him in this contest, but the senior captain comes in here and gets the one yard touchdown run, and maybe that was just a <laughs> excuse me, you know, maybe that was just a you know, I'm not a hundred percent, but I can I can come in if necessary, or you know, it was uh, I want to get my senior a running back, a touchdown if possible, if he's you know still nursing his injury, trying to get back. Maybe it's a, you know, we see an opportunity to get him on the field and see how it feels to be out there. As they'd like to have him at full strength for the playoffs, but whatever scenario, no one was expecting to see Danny Scott, but he comes in here and he gets the one yard touchdown run. 38 nothing, 31 seconds to go. That surprised me, Aaron. Scott was out of the, Scott was, not really doing into the game. Muhammad Jader was a starting running back. Running back who's done an excellent job in his replacement. But that's going to be a big piece for CC with Scott coming back, able to be at full strength for the playoffs because they knew for that playoff run. They'll be playing some tough teams in the in the Division One state playoffs in their side of the bracket. They got some good teams they might face in the regional round, like Davidson or Clarkston, just to name a few. Yeah, just to name teams. a few. Those are two of the top teams in the state right there. So two very, very good programs that Catholic Central could run into. But you know, the Catholic Central is making it clear we are a very good program ourselves. And then we looked at the other side of the bracket. We've talked about a lot with Cass Tech and Belleville and West Bloomfield. On the opposite side, there's a lot of talent in Division One from both sides that we're going to be keeping an eye on over the course of the playoffs and it could be for an interesting and exciting state championship at the end of, at the, end of the season. It's up a 45 yard line Loyola territory because there was a flag that was on the touchdown for a personal foul on the Bulldogs. Clock at 31 seconds. Metzer, let's see what he wants to do here. And does he take a full on kick or does he onside it? Metzer, the senior kicker. He's going to send this one away, and he will. He gets it through. It's going to be a touchback. If it goes to the uprights, does it count as points? <laughs> I don't think so, unfortunately. Uh, I don't think so either, <laughs> but that's still pretty impressive. But uh, no, this has been an incredible performance for Catholic Central. You know, we get set for halftime here. We'll see, you know, what kind of mentality the Bulldogs bring out in the second half. And obviously Catholic Central starting with the football is, it should be a running clock if the Bulldogs don't score here before the end of the the first half. 30 seconds to go, Garrett. And looks like some early movement by the Shamrocks. But it looks, and they're gonna say they did not jump offside. Garrett took a knee, did not see that. It's kind of moving, it looks like Catholic Central jumped first. But Garrett, they're gonna say Garrett took the knee. So that's going to end the first half of play. A 
to nothing lead for the Shamrocks of Novi Detroit Catholic Central over the Bulldogs of Detroit Loyola here to the Detroit Catholic High School League Bishop Division Prep Bowl Championship game. And a great first half for the Shamrocks, Alex, and they played a very sound and efficient half. You look at the performance from the defense forcing turnovers left and right, giving the offense great opportunity to start with the football. So uh, the offense has succeeded because of the way the defense has played and a uh, great game for Catholic Central on this one. Yeah, absolutely on both sides of the ball. Our Diamond Elite sponsor, Detroit Public Schools Community District. Our children need to be in school as every school day counts for their academic, social, and emotional development. Detroit Public Schools Community District is preparing students for their rise and has implemented a safe return of options to meet the needs of our families, including face-to-face -face learning and online learning at home or in a learning center. The DPS CD team has been working hard to serve families during this difficult time and remains focused on providing outstanding academic, arts, and athletic programs and exceptional student education services. Please join us in thanking the DPS CD teachers and staff in preparing for your child's rise to build a stronger Detroit. If you're your child at Detroit Public Schools Community District, by visiting DetroitK12.org or calling 313-240-4377. Remember, when students rise, we all rise. A 38 to nothing advantage for the Shamrocks of Novi Detroit Catholic Central over the Bulldogs of Detroit Loyola. We'll be back for the second half right here on the Detroit Free Press Game of the Week.
and welcome back everybody to Tom Macfield and Father Elmer Stadium on the campus of Novi Detroit Catholic Central High School. It's a 38-0 lead for the Catholic Central Shamrocks over the Bulldogs of Detroit Laura here in the Catholic High School League Triple Bishop Division Championship game. We're ready to start the third quarter. Alex Johnson and Aaron Johnson with you on the call this afternoon. Catholic Central made a statement in the first half, half creating turnovers after turnovers. And that's the biggest difference so far. That's why they have the lead. Yeah, the turnover is a huge, huge issue in this game. And, you know, the Bulldogs have to do a better job of protecting the football. Meanwhile, Catholic Central, you look at the performance that they've had on both sides of the field and you can't be anything but impressed with this program and what they've done this year. A phenomenal turnaround after not making it to the playoffs last season. Well, Coach Dan Anderson has his team playing an incredibly high level of football right now. Marquez Anderson, the kicker for Loyola, sends this one out of bounds and the Shamrocks will start it at the 35 yard line. First down, CC. Shamrocks, like we mentioned earlier, winners of the Catholic High School League Central Division this season. Loyola won the Double A Division this year in the Catholic League. Catholic Central always plays a tough and grueling schedule with teams like Brother Rice, St. Mary's, and De La Salle. Played U of D Jesuit last week. They're going to hand it off to Mohammed Schaefer to begin the second half. He's going to run out of bounds. Chasing him down there was Jason Hardy. And the clock is going to run right now with being a 38 point lead for the Shamrocks. But surprised to see Jaefer getting the carries here to start off the second half. I thought might see some different guys get some looks here. and. You know, maybe we'll, maybe, you know, it's going to be a, a, a drive or two before you really start to work in the backups. And now Bile step back to throw a low snap, looking over the middle. That one is going to be bobbled, looking for Connor Cohen. Marquez Henderson in the area, breaking up, the ta breaking up that pass. Third down and eight. Loyola coming off, scoring 74 points to a Romulus team. They've had a lot of high scoring numbers for them over the course of the season. Bile lost the snap, able to get it back, able to get to the football, running, not going to throw over to his right. He's got Cohen this time. Cohen gets past the midfield to the 45. He gets brought out of bounds by Derek Harmon. And CC will move the chains. A lot of time, even after a poor snap for Bio, and Cohen just runs his round and wins his matchup as he gets the reception there. And the first down, the chains move for the Shamrocks. Nice play there by the tight end for Catholic Central Cohen. Bile in the shotgun formation with Jafer in the back. They're going to hand it off to him on the run at the 40. Still moving. Now being pushed out of bounds by Henderson. Stopped on the play by number 10, Marquez Henderson, and number one, Jason Hardy. And Jason Hardy was there as well. Second down and three at the 38. Second and three. Shamrocks now in Loyola territory. Tom Dursa to the left, Davenport to the right. Dursa is going to take it this time on the run. He had one carry in the first half, gets his second carry of the day right now. It's a good game, and that's enough for a first down. Yeah, the chains. Keep moving for the Shamrocks. You know, the offense looking good. A lot of the, you know, main guys still out on the field here. So 
They're looking to at least score one more time before maybe you start to see some of those uh, reserves come out on the field. But, you know, you look across the board and you see the names out on the field. You see, you know, Bile and Semp and, and Dursa and Jafer. You see all these different guys, you know, these number one guys on the depth chart still out there. So Catholic Central, you know, they don't want to let the Bulldogs into this game one bit and they got to bring out their starting unit here on this opening drive and continue to mount pressure. Play action, looking to throw deep, and he has it over to Ramirez, and he's going to go into the end zone for a touchdown. A nice play action play by Bile, and sees Ramirez wide open near the middle towards the left side. He's able to get it into the end zone after a nice run for him. Yeah, Ramirez with a second touchdown snag of the day. The first one came on a five-yard pass on a play action from the goal line. Now Menser will kick the extra point. The kick is away and it's good. 45 nothing in favor of the Shamrocks over the Bulldogs and Detroit Loyola. And the Shamrocks keep adding on to their lead. We'll just talk it over now as we'll see the Bulldogs come out for their first drive of the second half. We'll see the Bulldog offense really struggled in the first half. A lot of turnovers. It was when the offense was moving, it was a lot of short passes, not big yard gains outside of a few early in the first quarter. But outside of that, it has been pretty quiet for them. And you know, no, nothing on the ground has been more than uh, a handful of yards here and there. So. Their offense is going to have to look a lot different compared to what they looked as to be in the first half. So now, Menser getting ready to send this away. Well, as well as Foster has to return. 7 and 52 to go here in the third quarter. Foster is going to get it at the one yard line. Moving. He's brought down at the 20 yard line. A nice tackle by Beckler Hauser. And here come the Bulldogs now. On their first drive of the second half. 19 yard return for the Bulldogs makes it first and 10. Ball will be spotted at the 20 yard line. So now, here comes Garrett, fakes the run, off to Hardy, looks over to his left on the quick pass, gets a few yards. Yeah, you know, if that's the style of play that Loyola is going to go with, a little dink and dunk here and there, you get a guy like Hardy who's capable of breaking off for a big play, or the same goes for Shannard Foster. So. You know, that might benefit them rather than taking deep chances down the field. So look over to his left again. Hardy has it once again. Goes out of bounds after a short game. You know, you're going to have to mix in some different stuff. You're not going to be able to run those short screens every time. You know, but a couple slants up the middle and well, maybe not always going to the outside, you know, just starting to shake it up and keep the, cent the Catholic Central defense on their heels. Looks back to throw on third down. Hardy with some room. There's a couple flags down. He has some room. He's at the 50, going down to the 30-yard line before he's finally brought down to the 20-yard line. Nice tackle by Cameron Davenport, but there's a flag down in the back. We'll see what that is. We'll see if the ball is coming back or what the deal is. They're going to be on the defense because they're signaling to move up the field. Holding on Catholic Central prior to the pass, it's declined. And a nice reception by Garrett to Hardy Stands. Ball spotted at the 20-yard line. 
for the Bulldogs in Catholic Central Territory. A 55-yard com completion by Garrett to Hardy. Well, and that's the thing that we were talking about. You know, you get this guy like Hardy. He's a guy that's breaking off a big run after a catch, and that's been his main target in this half. Hardy, too high that time to get there from Garrett. Garrett was running off the field very quickly after that pass. Yeah, he's in some pain right now. Over on the side, he immediately after throwing that ball came off the field and just kind of went down to the ground once he got to the sideline. That is not what you want to see if you're the Bulldogs. You look at where you're at in this game and you know, a week before the playoffs begin, your top quarterback goes down. So you got to hope that it's a quick turnaround for him. Henderson's going to get it this time, and the Catholic Central defense able to get to him. Braden Courser, Sean Field, and Jackson Ewald with a tackle. Well, luckily, Garrett is going to come right back out on the field. Must have just been, you know, one of those stingers that it just really hurts for a second. And you just got to let that sting, that ting, go away. He's back out on the field here. <laughs> Loyola is very happy to see that. And it looks like the Shamrocks jumped. And it looked like that was Braden Corser, who's called from offside. It's going to be third and seven at the 17. Garrett on third and seven, very reasonable now. On the run to Brockman. Brockman with some nice room, stays up before a swarm of Shamrock defenders get to him. He's down near the 10 yard line. Sean Field made the stop. And Andrew Ross, and a flag is called. 3.04 to go. Looking at the spotting of the ball, it should be a first down if this flag doesn't bring the play back. Yeah, we'll see what the call is here. What sports been like on both teams? It's going to offset and first down and goal for the Bulldogs. Clock continues to run at 2.43 with Garrett out in the shotgun. Brockman, and he gets stopped at the line of scrimmage. Nice tackle by Sean Field, the solo tackle for the junior defenseman. Another captain of this Catholic Central team. A junior captain, you don't always see that. Second and goal at the nine, they say, with two and 16 to go. 45 nothing in favor of the Shamrocks over the Bulldogs. Now, Garrett. Looks to throw on second and goal. Looking over to his left. That one is going to be incomplete. Jafer made the coverage. Hardy, the intended receiver. And we knew that once she got into the red zone, that that Catholic Central defense was kind of had to close the gap that they were giving Hardy. They had been giving him space in the open field. But you don't want to give him that in the red zone. And right there, they man up on him and give him no opportunity to catch that football. So now under 90 seconds to go in the third. Garrett looks to throw on third down. That one looks like that's going to be complete to the junior wide receiver and tight end, Dion Horton. His first completion he has for him here tonight. But it's going to be fourth and goal at the four. And obviously they 
offense going to stay out on the field here for the Sham, or excuse me, for the Bulldogs and the Shamrock defense looking for another fourth down stop. Fourth and goal. Garrett looks to throw. That one is going to be Kevin broken up, incomplete. Davenport made the stop. Foster, the intended receiver, and the Shamrocks will get it over on downs. First down to BC from their own four yard line. Clock is under 30 seconds. We'll see if the Shamrocks will run a play or just let the clock run out to end the quarter. We're still waiting what they want to do. But that was a big stop for them on fourth and goal. And they're going to just walk over to the sideline and change sides. So it's 45 nothing in favor of the Shamrocks of Catholic Central over the Bulldogs of Loyola. The in the Detroit Catholic Florida High School League Prep Bowl Championship game here this evening and on the Detroit Free Press game in a week. That's the end of the third quarter. Yeah, and you know, you've got to give it to the Bulldogs. I mean, they gave it everything they had on that drive right there all the way inside the 10-yard line and unable to get into the end zone. Well, that Catholic Central defense has held its ground and looks to uh, continue to pitch their shutout. You're going in and out of the fourth quarter as the CC offense steps back out onto the field. They're going to get the ball at their own four yard line to start. Looks like we have a new quarterback in as well. That's the junior, Brady Hewer. Central lines in the back of the I formation. Hewer, turn off to Lions. Lions looking to stay out of the end zone. It's going to be second down. The Bulldogs were trying to chase him there. Braylon McDonald with the tackle. That was a two yard loss. And then back up to your two yard line. So second down and 12 at the two. Now Hewer on second and 12. They're going to give it up to Lions. Ball's loose. Looks like it's going to be picked up by the Bulldogs. Still loose. And it's going to be a touchdown for the Bulldogs. A fumble recovery for a touchdown for Miles McFarland. Miles McFarland with a and that is not what you want if you're Catholic Central. It's going to give you some sign of life if you're the Bulldogs, but Catholic Central not going to be happy with that. And, you, know, you can deal with going three and out or you know, not scoring the football, but to give up a touchdown, just not what you want to see if you are the Shamrocks. That's going to be a frustrating moment over there on that sideline. So the Bulldogs looking to stay out on the field. Actually, they're going to go for the extra point. Foster is going to kick the extra point. So Foster getting ready. Snap, the kick up, and it's good. 45 to 7 is now the score and the lead for Catholic Central still with 10 minutes to go in the game. Right, so Catholic Central still well into in control of this football game, but you know, you just don't want to make mistakes like that to leave a bad taste in your mouth. You don't want to spoil what has been such an incredible performance for your team and it'll be a great one for your program here in the Prep Bowl Championship. So, you know, it's going to be important for Catholic Central to come out on this drive and, you know, milk the clock if they can and just control the football as they really have throughout the entirety of this football game. Yeah, that was the only mistake Catholic Central made up to that. Only true mistake, I should say. But that fumble for a touchdown that was recovered by Miles McFarland of the Bulldogs. Now the Bulldogs getting ready to kick this one off. Marquez Henderson. Still in the running clock. 
with 9 and 11 to go. And now Henderson is going to send this one off. And that one is going to be picked up by Brady Blake Bethesda. He's able to still love. He's still going. He's at the 45, going down to the 30-yard line, still on his feet. And before he finally gets brought down here, that 10-yard line looked like he was out, but still went up. And he was finally brought down by Jamori Biggs. Yeah, those Shamrocks have been tough to bring down in this game. And right there is no different as he's able to get all the way inside the red zone. And they're going to mark him down at the 10-yard line. So it's going to be first and goal at the 10-yard line for Catholic Central. 74, yard return. 74 yards on that kick return. Yeah, Blakita just kept going and kept running, and you never give up on a play. And, you know, he's a guy as a sophomore that's still trying to prove himself and as a member of this team and as a contributor to this team. And that's kind of a situation where you take advantage of, and he's able to do it right there on a big run where he's almost able to skate into the end zone. Hewer in the shotgun. And hand it over to Hager. Hager looking to the right. Able to stay up. He finally gets brought down by Ramon Murray. Able to get up on his feet, get ready to start the next play. This broadcast is brought to you by the Detroit Free Press, your flagship news and information source for sports in Michigan. The Free Press has launched a new digital subscription model which gives high school sports fans exclusive access to Mick McKay's weekly columns, rankings, and predictions. Your support will help the Free Press stream high school football games all season long. Subscribe today at free.com for our latest promotional offers. 45 to seven is the score in favor of the Shamrock. Seven minutes to go in this one. Second and goal at the five yard line after a, a 74 yard kick return by Brady Plakita. Bell. He's had a couple touchdowns here today, looking to get a third one, but not this time. Biggs with the tackle up the middle. He gets a gain of two, third and goal at the three. And Bell is going to be a guy next year. You know, if Danny Scott is back and healthy for this Catholic Central team in their playoff run, that Bell is going to be a big part of that rushing offense next year, along with Jafer, both juniors. So they want to give him touches when they can, and they show they're confident in him as a, a goal line rusher. Three back set here on third and goal for the Shamrocks. Hewer loss of football, and he's going to be brought down for a loss by Henderson and Harmon. That's a big loss for the Shamrocks there, and it's going to set up a fourth down, and a field goal unit's going to come on out to the field. Menser will kick this one. This one's from 29. He missed one from 40, but he made one from 26. So Menser's going to kick this one. Defense is ready. The snap, the kick is up, and it looked like it was deflected, and it's no good. Menser's 29-yard field goal attempt is no good. So under five minutes to go here in this one. It's a 45-7 to lead for the Shamrocks for the Bulldogs of Detroit Loyola. And the clock continues to wind down, still in the running clock. Ball will be spotted at the 20 yard line for the Bulldogs. And we'll see how aggressive this Bulldog offense is. And, you know, obviously, still a running clock format. They're down big. And, you know, are they going to just run the clock out or are they going to try to put on another score here and maybe try to stop the clock? Garrett's still in at quarterback. First and 10, looks to throw to his right. Deep down the field, nearly picked by Chris Goble, the senior defensive back. 
me. I was headed towards the out of bounds line, and Goble just trying to stay in bounds, but reach out and grab it, but unable to do so there. And the senior is just going to get a deflection on that one. Clock under four minutes, second and ten at the 20 yard line. Garrett's in the shotgun again. Four wide receivers out. A quick throw over to Caron Davis. Looking to get past one tackle, but not before a swarm of Shamrocks get to him. Goble was there to get the tackle. Chris Goble and Hayden Gower, the senior linebacker, made the tackle as well. Brings up third down and nine. Third down and nine at the 21-yard line with three and 11 to go in this one. Garrett looking to throw deep down the field. That one is going to be caught. What a nice play, nice catch by Horton. And that moves the chains for the Bulldogs. Yeah, Horton, the junior wide out, able to bring that one in near the 50-yard line. You know, mark it at the 49 of the Loyola territory, but a big catch there. The chains move and Loyola offense gets to stay out on the field. Good gain of 28 to move it to their own 49 yard line. Garrett to his right, Davis with a catch. Gets the first down before he's brought down by Connor Bell. Anthony Garrett's pass completes to number five, carry on Davis. Two and 23 to go here in this one. Chris Goble with the stop for the Shamrocks. Now Garrett looking over, two and 15 remaining. Looking to throw again. That one gonna be caught by Davis before getting knocked out of bounds by Owen Lamara. He's a senior defensive back. A nice one arm grab by Davis just to reel that one in instead of letting it sail out of bounds. Second and three, under two minutes to go. 45 to seven Catholic Central on a run this time that's going to be Kamari Wright. Hayden Goer and Connor Bell with the tackle. Kamari Wright, the ball carrier for the Bulldogs. 90 seconds to go with this one. Garrett Bennett with the stop for the Shamrock. Garrett the throw deep down the field. That one is going to be caught by Hardy going into the end zone. He's in for a touchdown. What a nice catch by Jason Hardy. And the Bulldogs able to add a late touchdown here. Yeah, that one comes with uh, just a little bit over a minute left. Not that it's going to matter in the terms of who wins or who loses this game, but. Able to get some positive momentum heading into next week. Foster on to text, uh, attempt the extra point. And the kick is good. 45 to 14 is the score with 109 remaining. Catholic Central will come back out to work for most likely the final possession of the game. Just got an update from the Mona Shores Detroit King game. Detroit King rallied, but they couldn't come back fully as it's a 35 to 21 win for Muskegon Mona Shores over Detroit and Martin Luther King. And that's an impressive win and what was likely a phenomenal game over there. Two very good programs facing off. Playoffs begin next week. Catholic Central and Division One, Detroit Loyola in Division goals. Seven. It's going to be interesting to see how both of these teams, of how far they can go teams in the playoffs. Everyone makes it in this week. year. Detroit Loyola, a very talented team in Division Seven. We look to get them back to their normal ways and able to respond from this. And Loyola should definitely be a, a powerhouse in the Division Seven playoffs. You have to think that they're among the favorites to win this football. This fo the football championship this year in Division Seven, just a very good team over there, just ran into a, a force today in Catholic Central, and you get got to give it to Loyola. They've come out here in the fourth quarter and played a lot better, just a little bit too late against this Catholic Central team. Catholic Central, they look to make some noise into the Division One state playoffs this year. It's not going to be easy for them. 
A lot of talented teams as well, so it's up for grabs in Division One. So 109 remaining. Henderson is going to kick this one off. An onside kick, and it's going to be recovered by Cohen. And he's able to secure it that time with 108 to go. Is recovered by number 82, Connor Cohen. Could just see a couple of knees here from. Catholic Central From their own to end this minutes. football game. And it looks like the Shamrocks are getting set. Victory formation. It looks like Hewer is getting ready to take this one here. Minute and eight to go here in this one. And he's going to get ready. And he's going to take a knee. They'll have to do it one more time as the clock runs down to the final minute of this one. Brings up second down. Catholic Central going over. <laughs> Both sides to throw it over. They're going to just wave off the final play. And that's going to be it, folks. The Catholic Central Shamrocks for the Detroit Catholic High School League Bishop Division Prep Bowl Champions for the 2020 season. A phenomenal performance for this Catholic Central team. And it started with a defensive prowess of the Shamrocks, which led to great offensive opportunities for Declan Bile and Muhammad Jafer and company as Catholic Central put on a big first half performance and really dominated the whole way through a great win for them a well-earned win and they will go into the playoffs undefeated at 6-0. Yeah, absolutely do hope that both teams do well in the postseason and get ready for an exciting run coming up with the playoffs beginning next week. So that's going to do it for us here tonight at Detroit Catholic Central High School here at, here at Tom Macfield and Father Elmer Stadium. Our final score in this one, the Shamrocks of Novi Detroit Catholic Central 45 and the Bulldogs of Detroit Loyola 14. On behalf of everyone here at the Detroit Free Press, on behalf of my partner Aaron Johnson, I'm Alex Johnson. Thank you for tuning in to tonight's Detroit Free Press Game of the Week, and we'll see you next time right here on the Detroit Free Press. Good night, everyone, from Novi.